One month into the NPL men's season and what a start it has been. Last minute comebacks, major upsets, league lead changes and the best part is we have 18 more rounds to serve up. This evening, it's a juicy meeting between two teams who featured in last year's final series. It is Peninsula Power v Gold Coast United live from AJ Kelly Park. Peninsula Power will be hoping to square their record at 2-2 two two to start the season whilst Gold Coast United are looking to further strengthen their position inside the top four.
Here's how both sides will line up tonight, starting with Peninsula Power. Jordan Thurder will start in goals. Michael McGowan and Josh Phelps to partner each other in the centre back positions. Joseph Hitchcock expected to play ahead of them with Osman Fafana and Reese Gray on either edge. Kane Gibbs, Raffaele Bellardo and Josh Woolley will make up the midfield while Jason McQuaze and Ken Akamatsu are to lead the line. As for the visitors this afternoon, Carlos Saliadare, the captain, will start between the sticks. Blake Thompson, Daryl Bryant, Lachlan Remmers and Zahi Addis make up a back four. Brian Sotomo comes into the squad for the injured Xavier Pratt. Daniel Diaz and Fraser Hills will join him in the midfield with Chris Lucas, Teddy Watson and Nick Panetta up top. Weather conditions, roughly 24 degrees, partly cloudy, with the chance of showers near the coast. Sunset is expected for 6.03 p.m. And our match officials this afternoon, Isaac Zimmerman, the fourth official, Jay Hudson and Tom Fell are the two assistants with Mackenzie Janes owning the middle. Here we go. Another 90 minutes ahead between two sides who excite. We are underway at AJ Kelly Park. It is Peninsula Power running from right to left in their traditional home kit with Gold Coast United rocking the away as they have made the trek up the M1 for this clash. And both sides off to reasonable starts for 2024. Gold Coast United, of course, sitting inside the top four while Peninsula Power sitting in eighth at the moment as they climb into their attack. And Reese Gray couldn't get by Zahi Addis. It will be a corner to start. Gold Coast United, well, they have quite the goal scoring record, eight so far. In their first three games only conceded the two, that was against Gold Coast Knights. And they'll be hoping to continue that defensive record here. Zahi Addis will clear. Fraser Hills didn't have a lot of room to work with as Peninsula Power body surrounded him. And well, Gold Coast United came off a clean sheet last weekend, so too Peninsula Power. And it came against, well, many expect to be the ones to beat in 2024. But of course, being Gold Coast Knights, a 1 0 win, a Kane Gibbs goal, and a clean sheet to go with the result. And AJ Kelly Park was certainly bouncing after that one. It was quite the upset, all things considered. Gold Coast Knights, of course, don't drop many points in general. However, Peninsula Power stole all three off them. And McQuaze just getting tangled up. That was Nick Panetta in the challenge. Ball stripped off him, and here's the challenge on Velado from Daniel Diaz. Now the whistle comes. And two number 14s. One's to watch for either side, Daniel Diaz and Raffaele Velado. Both bring control to their outfits. It's third up. Plays the ball forward to Gray, who's in an advanced position. Zahi had us tight on him. Now Hitchcock playing it first time for Woolley. McQuaze had to get around the bigger-bodied Daryl Bright. 
They're a formidable pair, Darrell Bright and Blake Thompson in the heart of defence for Gold Coast United. Of course, Darrell Bright signing from Surface Paradise Apollo. Blake Thompson in his fourth season with Gold Coast United. Satomo seeing the start of a match for the first time this year in the league. Brian Satomo, who signed from Eastern Suburbs. Gold Coast United just looking to control the pace of the game to begin things as Gray turning and chasing. Thirtle did well to make contact there with the bouncing ball as Fraser Hills looking for the pass to Nick Panetta. history between these two in their previous five meetings. Peninsula Power three wins, Gold Coast United one and one draw in that time. And their last meeting was of course the NPL qualifying final at the end of last season. Gold Coast United hosting Peninsula Power who won 3-1 in advance. That was on the 1st of September 2023. The other results in 2023 included a two-all draw at Copelix Family Sports Park and a 2-0 win to Gold Coast United. That was in the 19th, uh, the 19th of March, and that was at AJ Kelly Park. So that's their last three. And the biggest win in all competitions between both sides was Peninsula Power 6, Gold Coast United 1, on the 24th of August, 2019. Seven goals in that game. And each game since has produced goals. It's one thing you can just about guarantee between these two sides. Tomo just falling as he made contact with the pass and did well in the end as Teddy Watson is pleading for a foul. Mackenzie Jaynes didn't see it that way and we continue with Peninsula Power in possession as Kane Gibbs spots space. Now Akamatsu in two minds decides to play it on for Woolley and Blake Thompson puts the attack to an end. Peninsula Power will be hoping to follow on from the MPLW form in the game just prior. Peninsula Power against QAS in the National Premier League's Queensland Women's Competition. And it was a 3-0 win to Peninsula Power. So the doublehead is off to a good start. If you support the Redcliffe base side, Ellie Caspinello, Ashley Hummels and Anna Hirakawa were the three goal scorers earlier on today. And Zahi Addis cuts it back and Fraser Hills controls it. Satomo couldn't get over the top of it. And Jordan Thurtle will welcome it into his reach. Fantastic to see the double header on. Not something that happens too often around the grounds. A healthy crowd has turned out to AJ Kelly Park. And lovely conditions, quite pleasant at ground level, of course. Something the players will be enjoying, that's for sure. Again, Gray and Addis. Those two will come 
up against one another time and time again throughout the 90 as they're both exciting young players as Akamatsu dribbling into the penalty area finds Gray Makwase was waiting and Makwase going to ground Mackenzie James reading that and Josh Phelps not happy with Teddy Watson as he calls for him to stand. That's the second occasion Teddy Watson's gone to ground and Gold Coast United have asked for a free kick. An interesting battle with the number eight of Gold Coast United and the Peninsula Power defence. As Gray finds Hitchcock. Gibbs. He's not afraid to shoot as we've seen in previous weeks. And that one whisking over the top of the crossbar. You can't give him too much space or time, Kane Gibbs. Especially in that area. Carlos Saliadare launching for it. Didn't get a glove on things. However, he made a stop very similar to what just unfolded there last weekend against Brisbane City. It was Jesse Rigby with the strike from distance. It was dipping late, and Carlos Saliadaro did a tremendous effort to push it over the bar. He came up huge last weekend, Carlos Saliadaro. No surprises. Gold Coast United finished with a clean sheet. He was spectacular in that win as... Hitchcock again opting for Gray, who's heavily involved so far to start. Diaz, Hills, Woolley trying to open up the field, and Remmers a little too aggressive with the tackle. He's claiming he got all the ball. But unfortunately for Gold Coast United, they will be gifting Peninsula Power possession inside their own half. Phelps, Gallardo, Gray, beautiful passing between the three and uh, Gray just picks out a white jersey, Panetta doesn't have many options ahead of him and now Gold Coast United earn the free kick, Teddy Watson with the clap saying about time, Mackenzie Jones and well Here's their chance from a dead ball situation. Has some distance on it. Not sure how they will play it. As Zahi Addis will line up with it. As I mentioned, Kai Tapaldo. Well, Xavier Pratt, rather, sustained an injury last weekend against Brisbane City. And he is missing this weekend. As Mackenzie Janes blows straight to the spot. Well, we'll watch this back. Hitchcock and Fraser Hills going at one another. And then it was Hitchcock's challenge on Teddy Watson. That brings the whistle. And the man involved, Teddy Watson, will have penalty... Judy's against Jordan Thurtle. Gold Coast United pick up where they left off. Teddy Watson finishes it off and Gold Coast United have the lead. Hard and low. Jordan Thurtle did well to guess the right way but couldn't make the stop. And the visitors are ahead.
I was getting to Xavier Pratt is missing this afternoon, who usually mans up in the centre of midfield. Hence Brian Satomo starting here at AJ Kelly Park. And Kai Tapaldo returns from injury after missing last weekend. So they gain one and lose one. Gold Coast United for Xavier Pratt. Well, he missed round one due to illness. And now round four due to injury. So an inconsistent start for him who has had some good moments for Gold Coast United throughout the start of the year. I'm sure he'll be applauding that from Teddy Watson to get things going. And that is, of course, Teddy Watson's first goal in Gold Coast United Colours. Took three games and a bit. And he's on the board for his new club as Brian Satomo will go into the book early on in this one. Here's the challenge on Hitchcock. Our first goal and first card coming within two minutes of each other. It's great. Again, forwarded by Zahi Ades Panetta. Eventually finds Watson. He couldn't do much with it as Fraser Hills won't let. Reese Gray settle. And now Hitchcock has time. Akamatsu. Woolley was waiting for it. Satomo intervened. And Gold Coast United looked to go back the other way. Well, they can only manage a peninsula power throw in. And they started last year just as well as this year. In their first 10 rounds, six wins, three draws, and one loss. Their first loss came in round 10. That was against Rochdale Rovers away, and that was 4-0 for Gold Coast United. As Fafana didn't beat Remmers to the ball. A slight opening for Peninsula Power to attack from. They are far starters, Gold Coast United, in terms of a season. And in this case, again, because they didn't have as much luck in 2022. Only three wins, three draws, and four losses to start the beginning of two years prior. They'll be looking to continue this good form in, an, in another away trip. Kwase was on Bright's back. Gray picks it up in a dangerous area. And he just floated it across goal as Hitchcock and Diaz come together. Both of those two involved heavily so far to begin with. Now Phelps, Quasi, Gray, Peninsula Power have dominated field possession and possession in the opening 18 and a half minutes. However, it's been Gold Coast United who have had really one crack at the other end. And that brought the penalties and the goal. So 
It's hard for Aaron Philp to sit there and be disappointed in his side start as they have somewhat dominated play. It was a similar story for Gold Coast United last weekend. They were on the back foot against Brisbane City, but they were the ones that scored the goals. Three of them in the end. So Peninsula Power have to be careful that Gold Coast United don't put a couple away despite their dominance as Gold Coast United through Chris Lucas have another chance. And this time Peninsula Power go okay as McQuaze chase down Thompson. Saliadare gets underneath it. And he's happy to watch that hit the grandstand. Fafana trying to find Akamatsu. Surprise, they didn't know much about that as Woolley. Extends his boot. Velado. Raffaele. Velado wraps his boot around it. He did well. Carlos Saliadare saw it all the way. But it didn't land in a favourable position for Velado. Yeah, manufactured a shot. Down. Woolley. Again, they opt for Reese Gray. That's better. A better delivery, and it brings the corner. Named in match week three team of the week. Reese Gray and well he's putting his hand up again this afternoon. He's had many moments to begin. It to bring a real highlight as Woolley's delivery picks out Saliadare. Does have a tough task coming up against Zahi Addis, the former Gold Coast Knights man who returns to Gold Coast United after a stint with their rivals, along with Brisbane Roar Youth. And a regular starting member of this side. Cock. There's Hills who got the ball off him and then Gold Coast United. I want to take it quickly. Raffaele Velado puts his boot into it and Mackenzie Jane just said, What are you doing? As we look for Jane's reaction here. Velado want to play to continue. And Mackenzie Jane just says, please make my job a little easier for me. You know better. Just the two goals last night between the two games. Morton City Excelsior and Brisbane draw playing at a Brisbane City, rather, playing out a nil-all draw while Gold Coast Knights return back to winning ways with a 2-0 win over Rochdale Rovers at Croatian Sports Centre. And this is the next, next cab off the rank as 
We also have Redlands United and Sunshine Coast Wanderers on today, kicking off at 6 p.m. That at Compass Grounds. Gibbs. Woolley. Gibbs had to evade Mackenzie Janes. He's done well to maintain possession preceding that. However, turns over the ball and now Fraser Hills gets inventive. And it was a dashing moment before Teddy Watson wasn't making the run on towards the pass. It would have been a nice little moment there for Fraser Hills if that all came together. However, now it's Reese Gray. Coming back the other way for power. Akamatsu. Villado. Dancing his way forward. Akamatsu in a foot race with Zahiata. So that's one he may not win as it will be a corner to Gold Coast. Uh, rather, a goal kick to Gold Coast United. And Sally Dare will take his time to put the ball back on the spot. Teddy Watson netting a goal this afternoon. He becomes the sixth different goal scorer out of eight total goals for Gold Coast United. The others include Fraser Hills, Nick Panetta, Jack Peroni, Kai Tapaldo, and Chris Lucas, who has won. And Chris Lucas is offside as he's looking for his third in National Premier League's Queensland for 2024. Here's the build-up play as Diaz got by Hitchcock and Phelps. It was just unlucky timing with Chris Lucas. Hits the woodwork anyway. Now Villado. And over it in the corner, Zahi Addis, keen to rip possession off him. And Gold Coast United do have a back, Satomo hoisted in the air, but that wind really affected his pass as Makwaze goes to ground and earns the free kick. This will be a dangerous spot now for Gold Coast United to see out as Peninsula Power will have a free kick. Right on the edge of the area. Velado and Woolley, the two standing over it. You assume it favours Josh Woolley from this angle. As he looks the one to be most interested. Going to be Josh Woolley. And he had it dialed in. Just missing the frame of the goal. Talia Dare began to preempt the direction of the free kick. Better moments. They've had a couple of strikes on goal. Yet to really trouble Sally Adare. Away 
away we go again. That's great. Puts it over the top. McQuaze hunting down Thompson. Remmers keeps the ball in play. It's a time out. Got a little adventurous with the delivery. Gibbs. We get the better of Satomo. And now Gold Coast United have space to burn with Zahi Addis. Teddy Watson. Controlled a powerful pass. There's a little too much to deal with in the end as Great sets off down the right flank. And Fraser Hills, he won't stop running. And he unfortunately fouling. Reese Gray, the whistle came a little late as contact was made. Now we're back alive for Fafana. Addis heads it to Watson. And McGowan shows a little bit of composure as Gray gets by Panetta. Woolley has support. And another chance goes begging for Peninsula Power. They had him stripped. Gray found Woolley in behind. And there was a blue line. However, in the end, Gold Coast United manager corner. And it will be again the left boot of Josh Woolley to whip it in. Over 100 appearances for Peninsula Power. Josh Woolley. And Zahi Addis again turns it away. Makwaze goes to ground again. And it will be another free kick. This time in a far more central position. Mackenzie Janes only producing one card so far. As the penalty scorer gives away the free kick. And Villado and Woolley, the two customers again standing over the top of things. This one in a far more favourable spot. Woolley, a momentous milestone for Josh Woolley. Now the third all-time leading goal scorer for Peninsula Power. Bang, straight by the wall, straight by Carlos Saliadare, and straight on to level terms. Over 100 appearances for Peninsula Power. And now sits third in their all-time leading goal scorers at the club. And we have a game. One apiece, Hitchcock now. Carding it forward, Gray. Held his run, and Josh Woolley once more in the thick of things. Saliadare makes the stop as Gibbs looked to give and go.
Panetta has Lucas in behind. Chris Lucas denied by Jordan Thurtle. Well, this game's heated up. And Chris Lucas is going into the book. There's the chance he had. And now he will join Brian Satomo. It's great. Villardo. Great. Makwaze inches away. There's two very similar attacks on the Gold Coast United goal. Once again, it's Gray with the delivery. And this time, Makwaze just couldn't quite get there. Osman Fafana was... Backing up at the back post. Hey. Maybe the slow start could be down to the fact that Peninsula Power did play during the week. They had a Wednesday night fixture against Papua New Guinea national team. PNG are currently preparing for their World Cup qualifier against Sri Lanka. And they have spent their preparation with a training camp in Redcliffe. Very fitting to play against the host tonight during the week that World Cup qualifier against Sri Lanka will be on the 22nd of March for Papua New Guinea. They've now picked up the pace. Peninsula Power as Phelps overhit that one just a touch. Something they had to do against Wynnum Wolves in round two. That was at Carmichael Park. They were down 2-1 in the back end of that match. The game finished 2-1 in favour of Wynnum Wolves as they bounced back from that 9-0 thumping against Gold Coast Knights. A very important victory for them two weeks ago. But Peninsula Power had to try and break down the Wynnum Wolves and they just couldn't manage it. They sat very deep, did the Wolves, and gave them no room around the penalty area as Peninsula Power held court for quite some time. But no matter which way they tried, around them, through them, over them, it just didn't quite bring that much-needed equaliser. And that's only the only loss of Peninsula Power so far this year. A big one part, and they also came undone against Lions in the opening round as 3 0 was the score on that occasion. Diaz draws a whistle. It was a delayed one. Peninsula Power thought they'd gotten away with things. Zadis jumps in field and Lucas isn't going to give it up. Meant to be wary there, Peninsula Power. Now Gibbs sums up his options. Makwaze receives the ball back from Fafana. Akamatsu is 
making the run towards the near post. Blake Thompson read it well. Remmers. Thompson. Tomo trying to peel it in behind. Lucas offside in the process. Flag goes up. They have infringed a couple of times. Gold Coast United. And Jordan Thurtle, former representative of Morton Bay United, also spent time in the Perth Glory system, coming through the grades. As Gibbs opens up the pass for Gray, and Blake Thompson. Got in between the ball and the goal. This could have landed just about anywhere, but Gold Coast United are glad to hit the back netting. As Woolley, blustery wind, hasn't quite had the accuracy from the corners. This one. A little too deep again. McGowan just holds it out in front. Reeled it in eventually as Hitomo saw an opportunity. Now Maquaze. And here come Gold Coast United through Panetta. Peninsula Power do well to recover. They get bodies back. Addis, this time getting past Gray and going down. Mackenzie James reluctant to give a second penalty. Azahi Addis yet to stand. Jordan Thurder will check in on Azahi Addis. There may have been contact as Addis looked to release the pass. However, not enough in Mackenzie Jane's book to warrant the whistle. It'll be a drop ball to restart. We have two minutes left in this first half, plus whatever is added on. Gibbs, Woolley. Fafana, not afraid to take on defenders. Gold Coast United catch them out on the rebound. Here's Panetta, had Phelps in his way. The power can't quite believe it will be a Gold Coast United throw. They seem to think it came off Nick Panetta in the process. 
And the Zahi Addis will assume the role. Great. With an audacious attempt, Reese Gray hits the upright from some distance. Well, when you have winds behind you, you might as well. And Carlos Saliadare was pretty well lost at sea. What a way that would have been to find the lead from Reese Gray. Now Carlos Saliadare in a spot of bother. As the seconds tick over. We're now into out of time. Goals to Teddy Watson and Josh Woolley set us up at one apiece. And of course, Carlos Saliadare didn't finish last weekend's match. Zach Galea came on with roughly 10 or so minutes to play. That was, of course, after United had found some breathing room with the 3-0 scoreline. So potentially last weekend's problems coming back to haunt Carlos Saliadare. He's back up and moving again, but something to monitor over half time and into the second half. If he returns, of course. gone over the expired time as Thompson working duties from now on it seems is great works his way out of a corner you can see why he was named in last week's team of the week in some fine form right now Reese Gray is Lucas trying to turn Michael McGowan inside out, and the veteran does well. Hills, Pilato intercepts. Now it's Gibbs. Kane Gibbs testing out Carlos Saliadare. He comes up trumps. Does the Gold Coast United captain. Didn't have to be a genius to predict what was unfolding. As Kane Gibbs put his boot through it, Saliadare. No problem then and no problem there. Well, that was an entertaining first 45. Both sides delivering here at AJ Kelly Park. Half time. It is Peninsula Power 1. Gold Coast United won. We'll be back after the break for the second half action. The Matildas are on fire. 
the Socceroos have the breakthrough. Belton Industries is proud to be the official shelter and grandstands partner of Football Queensland. Felton offers a range of premium aluminium grandstands, from elite portable spectator seating to soccer team shelters for players and coaches. Give your fans the best view of the game with Felton's comfortable spectator seating. With sun-safe shelters or powder coated in your team colours, Whatever your club needs, Felton has a high quality, low maintenance seating option to suit. We are the pioneers in Australian made grandstands and team shelters. Contact Felton today on 1800 834 016 or visit felton.net.au.
We're looking back at the second half here at AJ Kelly Park. National Premier League, Queensland men's competition. We are ready to go for the second half here at AJ Kelly Park. It will be Peninsula Power getting us underway. As 45 minutes remains, one apiece between these two. And... Power will flood members forward, looking to catch him out. Zahiadis deals with it. And Lucas, along with Fraser Hills, the two to lead the line now for Gold Coast United as there has been a substitution made at half time. The goal scorer, Teddy Watson, has been replaced by Lachlan Urington, the number 16. And Urington. Been a part of Gold Coast United since the club's inception. Of course, with that, he is a product of the junior system. As also, Zach Galea now out there for Gold Coast United. Carlos Saliadare succumbing to the knee injury. Zach Galea returns to Gold Coast United after a stint in the National Premier League's Victoria. So, two big changes there. A lot of experience gone for Gold Coast United in Carlos Salidare and Teddy Watson. That's Panetta. Looking to link up with Fraser Hills and over that first 45 minutes, the stats suggested what we all thought. Peninsula Power holding the run of play. Seven shot attempts compared to Gold Coast United's three. And another interesting one to note, Gold Coast United committing ten fouls. Peninsula Power only committing the four. So that Stat a little uneven, but the one that is even is shots on target, both three apiece, and both have converted one. So, Gold Coast United and Pinch of Power. Neck and neck right now was Reese Gray attempted to keep the ball in the field of play. Right, just in conversation as to where to take the throw in. So we can move on with things as Phelps holds it back to where it came from. Akamatsu shunted to ground, play without the whistle. And McGowan opting back for third. Akwaze for Fana. Dropping quite deep, Jason McQuarze to pick up the ball at times. Certainly something that occurred throughout the first 45 minutes. Again, it seems to be a similar pattern. As Durrington holds off Bellardo. So both these signs, of course, in the thick of the Kappa Pro Series at the moment for Peninsula Power. They have two match days remaining. Round four against Brisbane City away and round five against Olympic at home. As the flag was up on Chris Lucas. And their leading goal scorer in that competition is Ken Akamatsu with four. They currently sit second behind Brisbane City. So that fixture in round four could all but decide who progresses to the knockout stage. Of course, only four teams go through 
to the semi-finals and those four teams will be whoever tops their group. And right now, Brisbane City and Peninsula Power are both on nine points. The only thing separating them is goal difference and that's by the margin of one. So very, very interesting. In that group between Peninsula Power and Brisbane City at the top. And as for Gold Coast United, well, they have three match days remaining. And they sit behind Lions right now, who, of course, have played an extra game. There's Gibbs trying to find room. Hitchcock, Velado. No one rushed into a shot. They all hold their nerve. That's great. Picks out Akamatsu. Continuing Reese Gray. Gibbs falling to ground. Fafana made absolutely no contact with it. And now Gold Coast United look to break out of trouble. As Lucas collides with Thurtle. In the end, it was only very mi minor contact. That could have been far more serious. Gibbs. Now Panetta. Taking his time in converting defence into attack. There's Galea. It's a back for Thompson. And now Hitchcock. Akamatsu. Here's Josh Woolley, straight into the boot of Zach Galea. And Peninsula Power denied a point-blank range. Woolley took his time, settled on things, and then his shot rebounded right back into him. Another Peninsula Power corner. It's their fifth of the game. There's plenty of distance. Gold Coast United defend it well once more. That has been a strength of theirs so far in this one. Both Phelps and Durrington go flying. Gibbs, McGowan, now for Fafana, patient in their build up, Peninsula Power as Velado had nowhere to go, Satomo on his tail, Panetta puts the foot down. Hitchcock coming across and makes heavy contact. Jose Hitchcock on Nick Panetta. It is a yellow ticket to go with it. It was a desperate challenge from Hitchcock. And now it's Gold Coast United's turn with a dead ball situation. Very similar to where Peninsula Power had their first free kick from, not the one they scored off, of course. On that occasion, it was Woolley who drove it just past the near upright. And now it's Thirtle's turn to organise his wall. And the 
wind behind Gold Coast United in this half. So a little extra to deal with for Jordan Thurtle. AJ Kelly Park holds its breath. Diaz whipping it in. And now Remmers hits it too high. A poor result really from the set piece for Gold Coast United. They didn't really cause too many headaches. There is another harsh challenge coming in. Daryl Bright, it is, pleading his case. We miss the end of that one on the replay, but it's another yellow card, and it's the third of the evening for Gold Coast United. As Woolley already has one tonight. Can he find a teammate? As you assume, he'll be trying to put it on the spot. Two hands go up. There's a delivery from Woolley. It fades away with the support of the wind. And Hitchcock gives Peninsula power the lead. The hosts are in front. Close to the hour mark. An open goal to head it home. And Joseph Hitchcock helps turn this ship around. 2-1 Peninsula Power. So it's Josh and Josa. The two goal scorers for Peninsula Power. Gold Coast United, after having the lead in the eighth minute. And now back on the ropes. Hills trying to reply for Gold Coast United. There's Lucas travelling in behind. Thurtle climbs into the clearance as Maquaze backing away and still with it. Maquaze has his jersey tugged. Mackenzie Jane's happy to let things unfold. Now Akamatsu, Maquaze. Maquaze! The Uzanars at AJ Kelly Park. Here it is again. I was about to say he's very dangerous from inside that penalty area. As he doesn't need any room at all to craft a shot. And that was exhibit A as Gibbs puts it on the spot for Akamatsu. He whips it in and the ball just wouldn't sit up.
Josh Woolley taking his time to get back on side. Daryl Bright had a free header and now Gold Coast United string together a few passes but Woolley's intervention is clinical and they had to hold on to him otherwise he was away Josh Woolley just tracking Diaz before lunging in and then Diaz's response was to hold him back and reset defensively for Gold Coast United Phelps dribbled into trouble and now Chris Lucas was teased by that ball Here was Phelps trying to charge forward and then Fraser Hills is putting a little too much on it. They have goals in them, Gold Coast United. That's one thing that's for certain as Reese Gray and Zahi Addis have a coming together. Here it was from the throw. And Reese Gray going into the book. And it's only the league that Gold Coast United have hit goal scoring form. It's also in the Kappa Pro Series, eight goals in two matches there, so they certainly have the numbers to back it up as Fraser Hills dancing every which way and was a whisker away. Zahi Addis picked out his vibrant teammate. Thurdle had a task on his hands that he just didn't quite manage as here come Gold Coast United again. Fraser Hills couldn't promote it. Bright teased up for Durrington. This game has been superb so far. Fantastic viewing. Action at either end as now it's Peninsula Power with Gray. Pinging it across. Woolley just chipping it up. He was in an awkward position as he was on the run there. Now Remmers. Thompson. Diaz. They make inroads down this right hand edge. Peninsula power number up nicely. There's Hills. Diaz stretching out. Gibbs. Tomo. Hills and Chris Lucas has been taken out off the ball. Mackenzie James picks it up. As there's a little bit of feeling starting to find its way into this contest. 
Both sides not willing to back down. McGowan, Pilato. They just went on the same wavelength. Final third there, Peninsula Power. As they have substitutions prepping to come on. Aaron Philp looking to turn to his bench. It's Durrington. Put it too far out in front. So it's McGowan. Rather, it's Josh Phelps. The other centre back on the ground, Jason McQuaze, will take his way off, make his way off the field. So too Kane Gibbs. As here come the substitutions. My apologies, it wasn't Phelps or McGowan. It was indeed Josh Woolley, who will also exit the fray. So some fresh legs on for Peninsula Power to run things home. Utah Hirayama, one of the substitutes, seeing some minutes tonight. Substitution for the Inter Town number 17, Jason Quasso, 7 Kane Gibbs, and number 8, Josh Woolley replaced. Number nine, Brenton Fox. Number 11, Yuta Hiyama. And number 22, Marcus Beatty. So there you have it. They, uh, the substitutions from Aaron Philp and They look to combine as Hiyama and Brenton Fox. Getting a touch for Velado. Fox. Loses out and Zahiadis stretching out. Beatty got a boot to it. Satomo! Well, he didn't think twice, Brian Satomo. As it was a lucky deflection off the boot of Beatty. It brought about the shot. Hitchcock, Beatty, no one ahead. Gray and Addis again collide. Phelps, Gray, pressured by Fraser Hills. And for Peninsula Power, well, they had an ordinary, they had a great finish rather to 2023 as Aaron Phelps rejoined as coach in May after stepping down for a break at the end of 2022 and they went 14 games unbeaten in the league as BT thought he had the better of Zach Galea but the young keeper keeps Gold Coast United in it Top stop from Zach Galea. There's Brenton Fox with the out swinger. Gray, Phelps. They couldn't quite make it work, Peninsula Power. Now Gold Coast United 
fly with Route 1. As I was touching on it, it wasn't the greatest of starts for Peninsula Power last year, but their finish was superb. They reached a thir round of 32 in the Australia Cup. And they bowed out in a 2-1 loss against Wellington Phoenix. And they, of course, also reached the semi-final against Gold Coast Knights, who went on to win the championship. And now with Aaron Philp there from day one, they're certainly looking much brighter to begin the year. You know, three points here will seriously help their cause at the start of the season. Of course, it is quite a log jam between first and eighth. As a win here would put Peninsula Power from three points to six. And offside flag up. And of course, we'd have to wait for results throughout the round to run their course before we know where they would finish definitely at the end of the month but a bright start to start for Peninsula Power as there's t less than 20 minutes remaining here. Gold Coast United now chasing the game. Fox, Gray, controlling their ball movement now. Peninsula Power, as Panetta tries his best to hold out for Fana and does exceptionally well. There's another glorious pass, this time from Josh Phelps, putting it right in the path of Osman for Fana. However, it does bring another Peninsula Power corner. Towards the near post, and Jose Hitchcock has a double. Peninsula Power have turned this ship around, and they are 3-1 to the good. A touch on the near post. Not much Gold Coast United could do about it. They had bodies everywhere. Zach Galea did his best. Well, they have a little bit of breathing room. That's all it is, is breathing room, but they'll take it, Peninsula Power. Still a lot of time left in this match. For the moment, they have a real foothold on proceedings as Hiriyama, Akamatsu, Combined, Beatty there trying to make a run in behind. Now Addis has Hiriyama to deal with. Chris Lucas, one-on-one -on -one with Phelps. And Josh Phelps just stands his ground. Substitutions to be made and win picking up here at AJ Kelly Park. Fraser Hills turning it back and Jordan Thurtle wasn't expecting a 
Shot from there and now Tempest starting to flare. Nick Panetta and Fraser Hills along with Daryl Bright have some concern. It certainly set off a reaction. Mackenzie James just controlling things as Josh Phelps receiving a talking to. And he will now go in the book as well. So three apiece in yellow card stakes. Something's clearly occurred within the arrangement there inside the 18 yard box. Now it is two of Pinch of Powers defenders on a yellow card in Phelps and Gray. They have to be careful now. Zahi Haddis chips a little ball forward for Hills. And then, then that attack will peter out. the power in no rush now the clock is ticking they will take their time at every turn Akamatsu receiving the throw in Gray getting it into the area Beatty to win the foot race against Panetta Fafana. Phelps. Lovely build up play from Peninsula Power. Fox onto Beatty. Akamatsu's waiting. Now Gold Coast United. Can they play out of trouble? Daniel Diaz just getting it a little wrong. His timing off and another free kick for Peninsula Power. They're starting to rack up now, that's for sure. Josh Woolley this time, but Raffaele Velado, who was in the conversation in previous free kick opportunities, takes up his spot. So to Brenton Fox. How will they go about this Peninsula Power? Of course, all of their goals coming off dead ball situations, two free kicks and one corner. Brenton Fox picks out the man in pink. Zach Galea wants to get things on in a hurry. Riyama in a contest with Thompson. Now Bright, Galea, and he had one option and that was to get rid of it. Zahiadis wanted a little better from him but 
In the end, Gold Coast United will be back on the defensive front. Coming here tonight, the only two goal scorers for Pinch the Power were Kane Gibbs and Marcus Beattie. Now you can add Joseph Hitchcock and Josh Woolley to the list. Joseph Hitchcock now the leading goal scorer for Peninsula Power as it stands after his two contributions tonight. And if nothing changes in the final 10 minutes, it's some record that Power have over Gold Coast United since 2019 in all competitions. Peninsula Power have seven wins to Gold Coast United's two. And there's been three draws in that time. So the record will tilt even further in favour of Power as Jack Peroni is now out there for Gold Coast United. As they try to change the tune of this match. Here's Velado. Great. He's picked his moments tonight and he's come up with very few errors, Reese Gray. It's been a sound performance from his perspective. Really locking in on that right fullback position. Compliments the tack quite nicely along with his defensive work. Zahiadis sees his night come to a close. Gray Piddick. Removing the defender from the formation and look to bring on some attackers as there's confirmation. Nick Panetta off, Christian Mardinus on. Former Gold Coast Knights man signing from the Knights. Coming across to Gold Coast United, Christian Mardinus. Gowan gets underneath that. Kill some more time as they have to fetch the ball, Gold Coast United. I'm sure the crowd won't be willing to hand it back over, considering the game situation. Kai Tapaldo, along with Braden Sprink, Spink rather, all new faces for Gold Coast United as there's Spink with his first involvement. Fraser Hills. Can't find Mardinus. And now they leave the door open for Peninsula Power. Beatty ahead. Here a Yama. Somehow gets it along to Brenton Fox with a bit of luck. And now the strike. Makamatsu. Off target, but had plenty of venom behind it. Thompson takes a space on off art. Now Spink. Mardinus. That'll do for Gold Coast United. A goal very soon will make things quite interesting. Durrington. Lovely bit of guile. Peroni. Back for Durrington. Mardinus. Durrington. Can they force their way forward? Jordan Thurtle makes the stop. 
They got very lucky there, Gold Coast United. It wasn't the most pretty build-up you'll ever see. And Durrington just did not give it up. Great. Hitchcock. Fox. Links up with Beatty. Substitutes. Do very well. As Fox. And Velado waiting for it. Now for Fana. Puts on his acceleration. Chris Lucas had to foul. And Hayden McHenry now waiting his turn as it's Reese Gray who receives a ovation from the crowd as they appreciate his efforts tonight. And he'll take his time. There's Hayden McHenry. One would assume will slot into that right fullback position. A like for like substitution. Fifth season with Peninsula Power. Hayden McHenry. And. Aaron Philp just looking to close out this one. Depaldo, Mardinus, both couldn't influence the path of the ball. Now it's Depaldo. And Phelps right on his back. Durrington. Earns the throw. Brenton Fox assumed it was going to be Powers. Forward they go through Bright. McHenry is a tall figure. It's going to be hard to throw it over the top of as Fox, the outside of the boot, gets it on to Beatty. Here's Utah Hirayama. He'll slow down the attack. Beatty rolling in behind. Fox, and once again, Gold Coast United. Don't quite deal with the danger. Hakamatsu, Fox, got a little caught up. And now Durrington can get it forward. Mardinus opting to run. And run he does. Advantage played and advantage taken from Gold Coast United. Hills hustling McGowan. Tapaldo gets it out in front. Tapaldo looking to get it back on the inside to the oncoming Chris Lucas. It wasn't to be as the field opens up for Beatty. Very important three points for Peninsula Power. As if you look ahead, between rounds 12 to 15, they play three of the top four teams at current. They have Lions away, then they play Wynnum Wolves at home, and then it's Gold Coast United and Gold Coast Knights both away. So while it is some time away, these... Early points mean oh so much. As you forecast for tough matches ahead. And Peninsula Power will certainly be happy to take another three points from this home game. As they did last weekend. Against the other Gold Coast side. And now 
McHenry did well to deal with Peroni. Didn't have many options on Peroni. Tried to get a little fancy. In the end, McHenry wins that battle. So Josip Milosevic to come on for Joseph Hitchcock, the man with two to his name tonight. Both off his head, which really turned the game around. Of course, Josh Woolley equalising, but Hitchcock the one to put separation between United and Power. As Spink hunts down the pass, here's Lucas. Bright, lofting it forward. Mardinus will let it sit for Fraser Hills. And it brings Jordan Thurtle to the fore. And what a stop from Peninsula Powers number one. The question is how much out of time will we have? 90 seconds gone already. As Thurtle again comes to Peninsula Powers help and makes the stop. He certainly on his game at the back end of this one. And for Gold Coast United, well, they come up against Eastern Suburbs on the 19th. In their round three fixture of the Cover Pro Series. That'll be at Heath Park. Another away trip for them to take before they then have two home games following it. Round five against Morton City Excelsior and then round four of the Cover Pro Series against Lions at Coplix. For power, well, they'll head out to Underwood Park to take on the Rochdale Rovers in round five of the National Premier League's Queensland. Before then, their round four clash against Brisbane City in the Kappa Pro Series, that on the 27th of March. That one, a big one. Put that in your diary. We'll pretty well decide who advances, you would think, as... Fraser Hills has to take over. Peroni offside. Of course, while it is an important clash, mathematically, Olympic can still make first spot in that group in the Cover Pro Series as they have six points left up for grabs and they are only five points behind City and Peninsula Power. But if you're a betting man, you think Peninsula Power and City will be the ones as Peninsula Power have two on the trot. It's a sweet three points at AJ Kelly Park. Josh, Hitch, Josh Woolley and Joseph Hitchcock setting up the victory for the hosts as Teddy Watson opened the scoring, but Gold Coast United couldn't keep it going. Full time here in Redcliffe, Peninsula Power 3, Gold Coast United 1.